Yeah. Yes, and your television. All right. All right. I'm going to turn that down. Welcome, everyone, uh, to the Rufus on Fire Live Hangout 2013 NBA Draft. Coming to you live from my living room watching on TV. We've got about 13 minutes to the draft starts, I think. Yeah, about 13 minutes. So I want to hear... I want to hear... Well, first, we'll introduce everyone. In the red hat, we've got uh, Jack, as we'll... As he's known, he's uh, my co-conspirator. He forms our rap group. <laughs> All the pregame disc raps. Say what's up. How's it going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm turn that down. Welcome, everyone, uh, to the Rufus on Fire hey, Dad. Live Hangout 2013 NBA Draft. Coming to you live from... My living room. Why is it repeating itself? <laughs> We've got about 13 minutes till the draft starts, I think. I'm confused by why it's repeating itself. Whatever. Anyways, we're going to have a lot of bugs here because um, I think I've done this once before. Um, so, Dak, uh, introduce yourself a little bit. I don't think many of our readers know about you that much. All right. Um, uh, I will do that. Uh, my name's... My name's actually Christian, but you can call me Dak, or Dak Planet. That's what I like to go by on the internet. But uh, I'm mostly a Wizards fan, but I, I consider myself a general NBA fan, and I really like tweeting. You can find him on Twitter at Dak Planet, D-A-C-P-L-A-N-E-T, on Twitter. I'm a freelance tweeter. <laughs> freelance tweeter. <laughs> He's got his own website you can find on there. It's really funny. <laughs> Uh, and then the other guy to join us is our other editor, Josh, Joshua Priemski. Hello, all. So to begin, we've just got some time here. I want to hear y'all's uh, top prospects. Uh, let's see. Uh, first of all, I think Nerlens Noel is the best player in the draft. Uh, I mean, best, like, long-term best player in the draft. I mean, I know he has injury problems, but... I don't think you can pass up on someone so good at defense. Uh, and then probably like two and three, I'd say it's probably like Oladipo, maybe Macklemore or Porter. But uh, Oladipo gets a little bit overrated, I think, but he's still very good. He's probably the second best player in the draft to me. Now Joshua, I know, is pretty big on Oladipo. Yeah, he's my favorite player on the draft. I'd probably put Nerlens Noel a couple spots behind him. Um, you know, this this draft doesn't have any, like, superstar talent, but it's, it's, it has a ton of really good rotation players that should get, you know, solid minutes throughout their careers. You say a couple a couple spots behind? Nerlens Noel is a couple spots behind him? Um, or right behind him, I don't know. Well, if he's, if, hypothetically, if he's a couple spots behind, who do you have right after Oladipo? Um, man, probably Alex Len. Okay. I do like Len a lot. Yeah, I'd, I'd put i put Noel top. I just think he has, you know, supreme defensive skills. I mean, that's the only reason why people are thinking of taking him number one. Um, he's just so good on defense. And after that, it's kind of it's kind of murky for me. I like Oladipo a lot. Um, and I like Len a lot, and I think Porter is going to be good, but it kind of depends on the situation. Like I like Porter a lot for um, for Washington. Uh, As do I. <laughs> I think he'd be really solid in that situation. Uh, gives them defense, um, and if he if his three point shooting continues to improve, or at least stands where it was this year, it'll be a, a huge help to their. Uh, just for someone they can kick out to, someone who can help spread the floor. I mean, with Beal and, and John Wall, they don't really need someone who can create their own offense at the three. Um, yeah, and uh, it's big that uh, if, if they do draft him, it's big that uh, Martel Webster might walk in free agency. I don't think they'd even have to sign him because I know they'd probably have to give him a little more money. And uh, speaking of Alex Len, I'm way lower on him than everyone else just because I'm a Maryland fan and I was disappointed with him. 
That's okay. probably a bad, that's probably my only reasoning, but. But you've probably seen more of Alex one than some of us. At least probably at least me and I don't know about Josh, but um, probably. what did you not see from him? Uh, well, his defense was always there. He he has like all the skills you could really ask for, but it's just like. He did everything well, but not well enough to me. But I don't know. I mean, that could easily be developed. He just, I think he's uh, hes a little rawer than Nerland's Noel to me. Who people say is raw, but I mean, I think Lens, he's not as ready. And he's like a year ahead of him, so. The thing I think people said about Len with um, being a little disappointing is that a lot of it was because of the team, because it was pretty guard dominant. Yeah. Would you agree with His, that? His uh, point guards uh, could barely cross uh, half court without falling over and just letting the ball roll away. So, yeah, I mean, th that's a big factor, but I don't know. I, ho I hope he can be good. I like him, but... I'm a little unsure about the Wizards taking Porter for one reason, and that's it'll, it'll force out Cartier Martin, and I think that's the worst move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cartier Martin, uh, he kept he kept us in games every now and then. <laughs> My other concern with the major prospect is that uh, Ben Macklemore he has no sideburns. Um, Big no no. Yeah. How do you how do you have hair on the top of your head? No sideburns. I don't. Yeah, that is that is bothersome. The major concern. Um, we're both fans of, of teams that have been dwelling down here at the bottom for a while. Um, how do you deal with it? Uh, there's a lot of people who like who like seem to want to trade their picks all the time, but I am the complete opposite. I'm I think I I'm impatient, but I'm not that impatient with the team. Like I can wait, but I mean, if you're gonna trade it for like Luol Deng for a one-year rental, I'm not okay with that. Like, I'd much rather draft a player who could be as good as Luol Deng. You don't think Luol Deng, at his age and his injury status, would be a great fit <laughs> for trading picks away? Yeah, I mean, he, he just uh, played, like, 80,000 minutes in a season, so uh, he, he probably has, uh, like, one leg left in his NBA career just because he plays so much because, I mean, he's on the Bulls, so he has to play all the time. Speaking of the Wizards, I do have another question. What are your thoughts on Randy Whitman? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like him, but uh, <laughs> he's not the worst. That's, that's always a good thing. Yeah. He's not the worst. He's not the worst coach we've ever seen. <laughs> You could not know anything about basketball, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I could have. I could have just uh, not watched any of the games and said that. But uh, I mean, he he kind of just threw out whatever lineups he wanted to throw out. Like Jan Vesely would just start playing like twenty minutes and then like get DNPs the next for whatever reason. Oh, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason he got the DNPs and <laughs> not the twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you were, uh, I don't know if you've gained any affinity for the Bobcats since helping us with the wraps, but uh, if you were in our position, who would you draft? Ah, uh, that's tough. I think if Oladipo somehow falls to four, they have to get Oladipo, but I don't think he will. Otherwise, I'd say probably if Macklemore is at four, I'd probably get him. I don't know. The, they have a lot of options just because there's not like uh, like one need. Like there's not one single need. They could get land. They could do pretty much anything and be okay. Yeah. Well, not okay, <laughs> but I think one thing that's on a lot of Bobcats fans' minds is um well the Bobcats have the opportunity to bring back Gerald Henderson, who um for much of his career has been a really solid defensive player. I mean his defensive stats won't won't say it. So I think a lot of that's because their team as a defensive squad was wholly awful. Like, if like, yeah. when you have a couple players that break down, if you have, I mean, 
Kemba Walker is he's okay, but he's not great on defense. And then you have like Byron Mullins, who's mostly terrible. Um, your complete defense is gonna just deconstruct. One part will lead to another. If the inside is bad, then you're you'll bring a you'll bring a perimeter player to help out, double team, and that'll open up the threes. Um, but he's been you know solid, so they could bring him back. Um, and it's yeah. not like he's going with a terrible defensive perimeter player. And his offense has been improving. He had a pretty good pretty good season this year. And the one question is that, well, if you can bring him back, is Macklemore or is Oladipo that big of an upgrade? Yeah, that's kind of tough. I don't think Macklemore is very much, but Oladipo probably, I don't know. I think Oladipo is. Joshua, what do you think? Um, it's really hard to say because we're starting to see Henderson uh, come into his own, so we're really not sure um, just how good he'll be when he's a finished product because he's not. Let's be honest, he's still young. Um, so it's really hard to say if either player would be an upgrade. Um, I think it's better to have an established thing than kind of risk it, but, you know, teams can do what they want. I think you could you could go a lot riskier than Oladipo or even Macklemore, but oh, we've, for seen sure, what, for sure. well, we've seen what Joe Henderson can, can do, mm -hmm. and you know, he could be improving even more as we understand it. Um, the last few months he had were pretty great if you're looking for uh, his offense progressing. Mm -hmm. Got a minute to the draft now. Ooh, who's gonna, who's gonna, who's gonna pick Targoy uh, Nungumbo? <laughs> there are a lot of skeletons in this draft. Yeah. You could make up a name in the second round, and I'm sure you could fool me with it. <laughs> There's a. Uh, let's see. I like Vander Blue in the second round. That's real. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real name. Yeah, it is. Somehow. I like Bullock, but that's only because I've, I've seen him. He's going to be a late first rounder, mid first rounder, something around there. I feel like the Cavs are going to pick him kind of early, like 19. Yeah, they could. He'd be a good he'd be a good pick for them. He's a real nice off the ball. Like, I guess 3 and D is kind of um, – that's like the buzzword that is going around for, like, auto porter. Yeah. Um, but he could add that. I know a lot of people are hating on him. Like, uh, like I, you know, I work in Chapel Hill. I live around here, and I remember when that happened. When he announced that he was going pro, I like I would get customers coming through my line at like uh, at the Whole Foods, and be like, "Oh, what a stupid decision." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because uh, people said the same about Alex Len, and they compared him to uh, I think the uh, current Nets player, Jordan Williams, because Jordan Williams left after his sophomore year and got drafted in, like, the second round. And now, obviously, Alex Len might be picked first, so I think he made the right decision. Yeah, I think he did. Um, <laughs> Jordan Williams is completely different. Uh, I remember Jordan Williams. He was a little bit overweight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He was pretty versatile, but not completely, not huge upside. You know, I think he's pretty much in the D League now or something. Yeah. He could he could bully people around, but that was college. He's too short to do that in the NBA. Yeah. Do the Bobcats not have a second round pick? No, they have. They uh actually <laughs> we could talk about this. They traded their second round pick this year for uh, Byron Mullins. Oh, okay, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Which is um, an interesting discussion. We could, I mean, I'm fine with it. You don't know what you're gonna gonna get. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's worth taking a flyer in Byron Mullins, seeing what he has. Yeah, I mean, every now and then he'd get hot, so it's probably better than anything you'll get in the second this year. Yeah. Well, the I thing mean, you have to remember about that pick is it's not just a second round pick, it's like the, one of the first second round picks. Oh, yeah, that's right. So it's pretty much a late first rounder. Is it the 32nd? 
I believe so, yeah. Yeah, because they traded to Oklahoma City? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I don't know. I feel, I guess, about, like, realistically, are you going to get much better than, like, a guy who can bring some offense? Like, yeah, yeah, it's I doubtful. Really kind of player you're focusing on with that pick. But if you want a guy who can spark some offense, I mean, Byron Mullins is basically, like, supremely low-efficient Kobe Bryant at seven feet. <laughs> you can do worse. A, a hideous one at that. A hideous, tall Kobe Bryant. Now, I remember <laughs> I did read in the Washington Post this week about uh, tattoos. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I do know Byron Mullins has a BJ tattoo on his forearm. One says B e and the other says B. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh oh. Now Joshua has Canadian TV, so he's ahead of mine by at least five. <laughs> it's really unfair. On television, go along at NBA.com and social media. <laughs> man, smile, man. <laughs> he had a, he had a long pause. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching WWE, man. <laughs> oh, look, it's us. <laughs> We got a um, a request to talk about Anthony Bennett. I saw. Um, you got some Anthony time. Bennett. I'll talk about Anthony Bennett. Well, I don't like you him. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I don't like him because he's overweight. He doesn't have an, an idea of what defense is. Although he could be amazing, and I could be completely wrong, but. I think he's getting a little overrated because his play style is like exciting, like he dunks, he can shoot. I mean, there are a lot of players who can dunk and shoot, and they still aren't good. So, uh, <laughs> Tyrus Thomas, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. I feel like he's a little bit overrated. Um, you know, he's he's pretty solid on offense. Um, me and Josh were talking about this a minute ago. He's not like he's pretty athletic, but he's not that athletic. Like yeah, I like, think it's a lot of his. Uh, it's all length and wingspan. He dunks hard. Don't get me wrong. It's really cool yeah. to see. But um, he doesn't run up the court that fast. Like I. So Kimball Walker was the, uh, the Bobcats player who represented them in the ESPN's. Um, player drafting today. He picked Anthony Ben and he said, yeah, I can throw a lob to him on the fast break. <laughs> but you, <laughs> we've got to wait a bit for um, for him to come down the court. I'm sorry, Josh, your dog on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's completely unaware on defense. Um, like, it's really surprising how unaware he is. He doesn't front people well in the post. Um, his offense is nice. He's got a, he's got a you know, service that we dump at. Um, yeah. He moves well with the, when he's facing up the basket. Uh, shot selection will be key. I think a lot of it will depend on coaching. You know, Definitely. He can do a lot, but I know Joshua has seen him being coached. Pardon me? I know you've seen him being coached before. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I was at a Team Canada junior tryouts a few years ago. Um, and, yeah, I saw him doing some one-on-one -on -one stuff. Um, I mean, he does the stuff. He's very talented. He's capable. But in terms of attention to detail and, you know, effort and, like, driving to be the best and perfect something, I didn't really notice that with him. Uh, he doesn't have that, that drive, that commitment to being the best that he can be. Yeah. It seems like a lot of laziness. Uh, I don't know. I mean, 
He could uh, he could definitely prove me wrong. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a really good player. Yeah. But these issues do exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, he gets his reputation as like this really athletic guy, and he's actually Joshua. How tall was he? Like six seven. Uh, six seven, six eight. And when you like you compare him to other like six seven, six eight guys who are classified as you know really athletic, explosive players. And that's exactly it. Like Bennett is described as being athletic. Sure, he's athletic for the power forward position, but he's not athletic for his size. He's about average. His length will serve him well. Um, you know, he did really well on the offensive class in college. Um, offensive rebounding generally translates to the NBA. So uh, sometimes it doesn't. Thomas Robinson was a really great offensive rebounder. And, uh, well, you know, he did it translate so well to this point. Um, Kenneth Reed was a guy who did extremely well on offensive class in college. And that's translating to attack. Yeah. Who do you guys think is the pick? I have no idea. I'll go with Noel. I think. I, I, I have to think it's going to be Noel. But the Cavaliers are notorious for just picking off the wall. I mean, not off the wall, but everyone thought they were taking uh, Jonas Valanciunas and they just picked Trish. Tristan Thompson, who wasn't even yeah, expected was, to go top five. That was a bit of a surprise. Um, I mean, I had heard some some whispers that Tristan Thompson was this guy that a lot of scouts were, but not at the moment. Like they thought he'd be really yeah. good a few years down the line. That's what that's what they were weird. Um, and but it's like, are you willing to like take on this risk and potential? To, to possibly get there. And the Cavs really bought into that. I did not see that coming back. I mean, that, was it number four? I think it was. Yep. Yeah. And then last year with Waiters, he wasn't expected to go nearly that high. I think I saw him like at eight most of the time. The other thing I don't like is Macklemore's little beard. Yeah, he's just an odd looking guy. <laughs> Look really, really hard. You'll see faint, uh, like, points inside of him. Very, very faint. <laughs> <laughs> With his little tufts of hair. And I feel like he has like I don't think this is bad. I actually kind of like it. He has like this natural like blindness to his grin, like he's, like yeah. kind of smiling. On an all time on the draft prospect smiling list, he's got to be up there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom of the sideburn list. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely number sixty. His uh, but you gotta love CJ McCollum's potential for uh, the smile. He's got a lot yeah. of potential, a lot of length in his grins. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I wonder about. Uh, I'm sure that he's taking a while. Is there a trade or something? I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Bill Simmons thinks it should be Oladipo here. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that. Um, I'm a big uh, Gordon Gang fan just because I like saying his name. Who's that? Jim? Yeah. Can you use names from Wait. Gordy? From, from what I heard? Uh, yeah. It's Gorgie or Georgie. I'm not sure. Oh, oh. Here we go. Oh, there he I'm, see I'm seeing the twits are saying who it is, but I'm not going to ruin it. It's big. Oh, yeah. Anthony Bennett. No! Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Cavaliers what? just... Dear Lord. So weird. They already have a power forward. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this is great. This is... Everything the draft is... is wow, like, a Canadian just got drafted first exciting. overall. 
everything. I want Andrew Wiggins won't be the first Canadian drafted first overall. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I can't know. What do y'all make of this? I don't even know. <laughs> I think my expression says it all, man. I'm, I'm speechless. Canada. Canada. <laughs> oh, Canada. Oh, well, let's watch some highlights. <laughs> Our home and native land. You know... tune, right? That's good. Yeah. I really have no idea what just happened. Seriously, if all the people they rumored to be going here, like, wow. Yeah. Like, how, what people have we heard? I know we've heard Macklemore. We've heard, um, oh, Len. hold on a second. Chris Sheridan said if they wouldn't trade this pick, it would be Alex Glenn right here. Chris Sheridan, <laughs> this goes out to you. Way to go. Good idea with the yeah. MKG reporting, too. <laughs> you can't trust that man for anything. I don't know. I feel like he wouldn't have even come up and put the hat on if he was getting traded. Oh, they do it, but they report yeah. it all the time. That's why, yeah. with, uh, that's why I'm with the uh, Bismack Biombo trade. Um, he's wearing a he's wearing a Kings hat in his draft pick. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Noel Noel might fall. Um, I'm thinking Carter Williams. <laughs> I'm thinking Orlando is gonna pick Old Depot. This completely changes up everything. I have no idea what's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, this is huge. <laughs> That's an awesome hat, by the way. Man, they're going all in on the yeah, nice. friend thing. <laughs> they got a bunch of hats with like stuff under these, you know, under the brim, you know. Wow, Shane Batty is good at that. He is. He has a future. He is, um, when I took a sports reporting class, um, he was, he was the subject of one of my professors, like, Back when he used to write for like Sports Illustrated, he wrote a piece on him, and uh, he like surprised him with some kind of like tidbit about how he used to write, he used to write like his goals for the year on like a note card and like stick it like on his dresser mirror or something like that. And he like brought, brought that up at an interview and it just like floored him. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think. think I think Charlotte's going to end up with Noel. Oh, man. Joshua, what do you think? I think that's what's, like, that's what's going on here. I think, man, that would be interesting. That would be quite the defensive pairing in the front court. Yeah. That'd be a really rough scoring front court, but that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Cause uh, uh I th I can't I can't think Washington will draft anyone other than Porter. Yeah. I just don't think I don't think they'll draft Noel. I don't know. Not when they have Oka four. I won't be surprised with anything. Yeah. Josh, were you there? I think he fell out. Yeah, his video is not showing up. We got 25 seconds. Uh -oh. Well, they're picking early. They're going early. <laughs> That's the real surprise. They got time on the clock. 
2013 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select. Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, man. So regardless, Alex. No, San Noel. Regardless, Alex Len or Nerlens Noel will be available. One of them will be available for the Bobcats if they are so intent. So the Bobcats are happy campers. Definitely, that's the Cavs just hand over good prospects every year. <laughs> not that they're not making the right picks, but I don't know. And I don't know about that suit. <laughs> <laughs> like a three-piece. Uh, Man, I'm thinking about the Magic's offense next year. It's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, their starting five is Jameer, and then Oladipo, and Aflalo, and then maybe even uh, maybe even Harkless. Yeah, Harkless uh, or Tobias Harris somewhere. Yeah, and then Vucevic or Vucevic, however you want to pronounce it. It's going to be kind of rough on offense, but that's a that's a much improved team. That's impressive. It's really interesting. At the least, that's like a team of guys who like no one who doesn't watch the NBA a lot will know. Yeah, all of, you could say any one of those names is like someone who randomly watches basketball occasionally. Yeah. Anyway, what? <laughs> yeah, Vucevic, come on, he had like a twenty twenty game. Uh... Oladipo makes some hilarious facial expressions. That's for sure. <laughs> Facial expression rankings, I think I got to go <laughs> with, I think Noah's Noah how Noel has the best, but I think Cody Zeller might have the funniest. <laughs> I'm just going to come in and help the program, man. I'm going to come in and, and, and uh, you know, help impact the program in a positive way on both ends of the floor. I'm coming, I'm going to work my butt off and bring the work ethic and everybody else needs to be able to get back to where it needs to be, and that's getting the least. On the plus side for Oladipo, he's my dad's favorite prospect in this. So he's got that going for him. <laughs> I think he has the number one name, probably, other than Vanderblue. Hola, Oladipo. I'm, I'm a big fan of the name. <laughs> oh, yeah, they got Indiana fans here. I thought they were all in Indiana. Good job, Shane. Well, I can delete Oladipo and Bennett from the, from the list here. Yeah. Surprising. You know, with all this craziness, of course the Bobcats will probably take Cody Zeller even with Noel and Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now it becomes a culture of work. And he's going to go in there and he's going to shame everybody else into working at least as hard or try to work as hard as he does. really good for each from that standpoint alone. Yep. Now, I met Jay Billis once. I made him a burrito. <laughs> I used to work at a at a Mexican place. I made him a burrito one. We uh, we talked about basketball, and I I got I mixed up the the games wrong. So I thought the Bobcats were playing like the Timberwolves or something. They were actually playing someone else completely. Totally was smart. So. <laughs> Did he enjoy the burrito? Uh, I hope so. Apparently, he comes in there a lot um, in Charlotte. I'm sure there's a, there's a Moe's. I'm not going to release the location because that would, I don't want to get swamped at Moe's with fans. You know? <laughs> Derek, you getting anxious? Uh, not really. Yeah, you got a minute. Oh, no, they're going early too. Good. I think they knew. I think they uh, knew he was falling to them. Probably. It's because it's going to be out of Porter. I was sure of that regardless of who was there. Stern, epic troll. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
the 2013 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select Otto Porter Jr. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. predictable. Okay. Tom Wall's going to like that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm a big fan. All right, the Bobcats are on the Bobcats are on the clock. I can't. I can't think that they would pick Len over Noel. I just can't. That's crazy. I would have never expected Mapplemore, Len, and Noel to be available at four. Yeah. All three. Wow. Hello? Is it for me? They were asking for you. I'm very happy. It's good. Should be. Yeah, his shot's much better than uh, most people think it is. Yeah, it's not very pretty, but it's nice. Yeah. It does go in. He's very versatile. I think that'll fit well in their offense. Yeah. And he, he'll fit right in on defense, because that's kind of it's kind of the Wizards' bread and butter. Yeah, they're going to be really good on defense at the end, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing they still start Okafor at the at the five. They've got yeah. Four. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh man, what are the Bobcats gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna draft Contavious Caldwell Pope. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna draft a point guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wonder how nervous Noel feels. I bet he feels just like I don't know, upset. And you know what this reminds me of almost. Remember when uh, Brooke Lopez fell to I think eleven? It was in thirteen. Yeah, he fell to eleven, I think. He fell right yeah, he was, like, the crying because people thought he was like a top five pick. Yeah, I I bought into him pretty hard. Trey Burke, you think of Trey Burke? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> Whoa, Otto Sr. looks scary. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> His hair is so much better than the Macklemore, though. Yeah, I might try. He looks nothing like his dad. Well, he looks like scary. He has like his eyes. Face shape. Yeah. I feel like I feel like he's just he shave off his head and I got the pretty much him a little bit older. I really want to see um you know they say Alex Lyons' girlfriend's like taller than Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh man, I'm yeah. excited. Where where I retired. I tried and that's when you get into the war. Oh man. I wanna hear Christian, I wanna hear your take on when Jan got drafted. Uh, I can't really remember exactly how I feel because I remember I was like on vacation, so I wasn't really that stressed about it. I I wanted Ennis Cantor really, really bad. Ooh. And he got picked uh, third, I think. Um, I can't remember who else I want. Oh, I wanted Kawhi Leonard really, really bad. But I figured he, w he would fall past them. So uh, 
I wasn't that upset with Jan, but uh, <laughs> should have been. <laughs> yeah, I really should have been. <laughs> I definitely wasn't sold on him. Yeah, I was. I really liked Tanner a, a good bit. Um, he didn't fall far enough, or the Bobcats didn't trade up for him. I really like him. What? Fifteen seconds. There we go. <laughs> All the way down to zero. The Bobcats are just, they're taking their sweet time. <laughs> oh, they took too much time. They <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would be the most Bobcats thing ever, so. I wonder if that's ever happened. Like, what would it, like, what would happen? Someone make the pick for him? Well, I think there would be a fine for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. But shoot, fines aren't that big a deal. You have to be a problem. You probably keep the fine. You should just take the pick away and raffle it off to another team. <laughs> Bobcats taking forever. No. Oh God. Oh God. Here we go. I keep it on Twitter. Oh man. Oh no. I have no oh. idea who it is. It's Cody Zeller, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what is happening in this draft? Hey, oh man, I don't know how to react to this. <laughs> I'm not oh, mad at it at all, but what is happening? I don't know. That's interesting. Noel, Macklemore, and Len are available. Man, on I don't know. I guess. I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not super mad at this. I think there were better players, but I'm not mad at this at all. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. It's it's interesting. I feel like he he helps like he helps the main weakness in their in their front court scoring. Yeah, um, I think they wanted it. I wanted wanted a big man who could score more than a post defender. Yeah, I mean Biombo does that, and I don't think Cody Zeller yeah. is exactly Byron Mullins on defense. Yeah, um, it's it's surprising to say the least. You know, there was word out that that would happen, but. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's kind of a shock to me. He needs to hit the gym hard, and yeah. he'll be fine. He got he got overpowered by a lot of people. Like he's a very impressive player. He just got so overpowered by people. I think he flops a bit though. He definitely does. He's one of those players that flails when there's any contact. He kind of has to. Yeah. That's surprising. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to think of it, really. I, it, it'll be well documented. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. So where, where is Noel falling now? That's the question. Well, I you take him with with the Suns. I I feel like they want Macklemore. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, here we go. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 
This is about Indian basketball. Uh, it says a lot. It says a lot about our coaching staff. It says a lot about uh, the hard work that we put in. Uh, I think Indiana's going to be good for a long time. The highest two Indiana players. Thank you, Thank you Reese. She missed the highest two Indiana players have ever gone in the NBA draft is the man they call the Big Handsome. The big handsome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Most things are right. You know, Get no I, don't, I don't think anyone should tell them this, but I think they're being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Phoenix is uh, Noel's injury problems would work out with their training staff, most likely. Yeah. So Plus, if, they're going to be back for another year. Yeah. And then you can bring Wiggins to that guard that they really want. They really like. I don't get going for. Um, you know, there's some good guards coming up next draft, from what I understand. Yeah. But, I mean, why I think, do you yeah, need, why do you need a wing player anyway? When you have uh, Michael Beasley, why do you need a wing player? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, uh, he scores some points. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a good point. Phoenix should definitely just draft Noel and tank to hell and do the thing next year. Tanking. Yeah, I think I love like it. the top five players are all uh or like the top ten players almost are uh like on next year's like uh big board. I think they're all they're all not centers, so yeah. Like Wiggins, Randall, Gordon, uh, they'll be they'll be good. Yeah, I'll be, we'll be back. Yeah, they won't be that good. Yeah, they'll be they'll be bad, but <laughs> we'll be better hopefully. I mean, the worst the worst thing like I mean, realistically, they drafted a player, a big man, a seven footer who has some good offense, nice touch on the ball. You can put the ball in the, in the hole. Like, it's that simple. You know, yeah. that's, that's always I wonder if they'll be on Macklemore. That's interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. This draft is completely haywire now. Like every year, I mean. But. Yeah. I mean, you have the Cavaliers, of course. And the Bobcats, of course. <laughs> Did you catch that building that was lit up with, like, the red, white, and blue? What was that? I'm sorry. There was, like, a... There was a building lit up with red, white, and blue. Um, I couldn't tell which building it was. I missed it. It was probably for the Wizards. <laughs> They're big Wizards fans in New York. Yeah, they love them. Oh, Jermaine O'Neal. The Suns will be fine. They have Jermaine O'Neal, TJ Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Brown's pretty good. <laughs> they got Ahmed Adati still, I think. Oh, man. Maybe? I don't know. This is gonna be this is gonna be weird. This the rest of like the top ten because there's so many players falling. Like, uh, there's still McCollum. There's still Len. There's still Burke. Yeah. Like the next three picks could be just anyone. I'm sure all of Twitter knows who it is already, but yeah, I'm sure, it's, I'm sure they're already on like pick 30 by now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Wow. I can't believe that whole draft's over. <laughs> that ruins it for me, but I have to. Uh, enjoyable doing this like this, I think. Yeah. Even though Joshua, being a fan of the, he's got good advanced screening. Yeah. He's it's kind of unfair. On He's on break right now, going to the uh, powder his nose. <laughs> uh oh. There you go. Shabazz. Shabazz. <laughs> <laughs> he would fit in very well with their culture. 
of Gunners. Oh my. There it is. I like that book. I do too, but you know, he'll spend crazy. Like a year, he'll spend a year behind uh, what's his name? Noel and Macklemore stay fall. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Macklemore going to go? Does he go to New Orleans? Because I think New Orleans really likes Burke. Man. But you know, you put Len behind um, Bortat, I think that would be good for him. Yeah. Kind of like how Utah has been playing their young players. They kind of set exactly. him behind Jefferson and, and Millsap. And I mean, you see that... Um, um, and you see those guys are about to break out, I feel like. Yeah, Favors and Cantor. Yeah, I feel like Cantor especially. Yeah. He's so strong. He's going to be... Nice. Yeah, I like I like Len a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I had my he, yeah. He has some. He has interest. Like he has a full skill set. As I said, he just I don't know. He seems to check out every now and then. But that's probably as you guys said, his teammates. Yeah, I didn't feel sure about any player really. Um, I probably thought Len was probably the best player given everything that we knew. That, that's why I put him in marketing consistently with them. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're not going to play his, his bad plays. Yeah. Len has a nice lineup. He does. Better than Mark. Jesus. The interesting thing about him is that he's... He still barely speaks English. He's been here for two years. I mean, he's probably gotten better since I've last heard him, but he couldn't speak English for a while. I saw him on um, ESPN's job interview or whatever it is. Very good. He, his English is a lot better than I expected it. Oh, is it? Oh, man, a suit. Oh, nice. Very nice. I like that. So now the Pelicans have they have Noel available. They want to they want to pair him and um, Nick Davis together in the front court. That would be kind of ridiculous. Yeah, wouldn't it? Full potential. That would be very ridiculous. So we could go with Trey Burke. Or we could go with Ben McElmore. I feel like Ben McElmore has a great first game. Oh, LeBron James defending Ben McElmore. <laughs> They're sleeping on him. <laughs> Just watch. Oh, I'm watching LeBron. Everyone on Twitter is asking if I'm okay. Prepare <laughs> <laughs> for card vote, Daryl. <laughs> Do they have commercials in this? Like, I can't, like, they're only, like, very short ones, right? I mean, it's like... Yeah. Pick. I really want them to pick Noel just to watch what could happen. Oh, man. They, I don't think they will, but, oh, my God, just to see it. At seven, you have um, you have the Kings. Let's say, and you know they were trying to trade down reportedly. Yeah. <laughs> Macklemore. Yeah. Well, I might not like, need to. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's uh, it's crazy. I and now potentially Detroit could get Trey Burke if they want him. That's such I'm not a sure. Good that's well, such yeah. a good it's amazing value at eight. Yeah, I mean they need a playmaker like that there. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be a great gift. Or gift, whatever you want to Ah, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, sweet lord. <laughs> oh man. Look at his suit. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I love this. 
I love this one. As purely as a just as a complete observer, not like connected to anything. You're not gonna be able yeah. to score inside. I love this whole draft. This is very entertaining. I love that. I really like that. Yeah, I like this. I like this pick a lot now. That was one of my things with with uh, New Orleans. I was wondering if they would, you know, if they would stay committed to Grievous Vasquez because he made such a big improvement this year. He was really good. Yeah. And I'm glad they are because he is a Maryland alumni, <laughs> alumnus, whatever the word is. Oh man, that's a disgusting block. Cool. Yeah, that's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to watch them next year. Yes. Oh, <laughs> they're not gonna play. A, yeah, they're not gonna play a single thing of his offense. <laughs> <laughs> like some dunks or something. He's taking people's souls, that's for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. If he can be like a Ben Wallace, that's amazing. <laughs> I just saw someone say Noel and Anthony Davis are going to be the, the thin towers. Gordon must be loving this. Oh, man. He probably hates it. He probably, <laughs> he probably hates it. <laughs> he probably still wants to go to Phoenix. <laughs> Austin Rivers is probably sad because he knows he's going to be crazy. <laughs> oh, Ben, Austin Rivers. No, you should think Austin Rivers is happy. He's not getting wedged out of the lineup now. <laughs> I'm surprised the hat fits on that hair. Oh, man. They, they probably made a special one just for his hair. I, th I think Noel needs to get girls. <laughs> <laughs> It really suit them. Yes. I really like New Orleans a lot. I get only as a basketball player, but the hair, like, there's so much like the personality, the hair. Oh. Yeah. About to go to sack. Yeah, this is crazy. Craig <laughs> Burke can go here. Unless they really want Ben Lackmore that bad. I think Trey Burke's a nice fit here, too. I think if Detroit gets Trey Burke, they will be ecstatic. Yes. What would your advice be to Monty Williams to get them to know the New Orleans about what to expect with Anthony Davis paired up with Nolan Zulam? Wow. Getting DMs, man. I'm sorry. What does Aaron Rodgers know about basketball? Aaron Rodgers, he's. He <laughs> played basketball once. The great lady, they're 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 ready for that next step. I'm happy for them. I'll we'll see how you guys down here. And did anyone see this coming? Like, I gotta look this up. I gotta see if anyone like thought they would pick him fourth. Next to pick, and seventh overall. <laughs> Man, these CGI banners are really funny. Yeah, I just don't understand them. They're so unnecessary. <laughs> like, if you're going for optical illusions, at least do it like the Raptors floor. Yeah. <laughs> Paint it on the walls. The Sacramento Kings select Ben McLemore from the University Ooh. of Kansas. There it is, yeah. The one, a wonderful they had, uh, the only person I see who had Cody Zeller going higher than ninth was NBADraft.net, who had him going fourth. You know what's really funny? That report about uh, Rich Cho being super, super high on him came out just last night. Yeah. 
Uh, this NBA Draft.net also had uh, New Orleans Noel going fifth. They're looking pretty good, but they had Otto Porter going. Well, they, had, they were right with Porter. Uh, they were right with Oladipo. They had him going second. Good yep. looks, NBA Draft.net. Macklemore going eighth. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff there from them. Shout out to NBA Draft.net. <laughs> and they're going to play this 360 dunk all the time. Yep. <laughs> at least five times so far tonight. But you see how he gets the shots? Yeah. He, he works for him. Yeah, people say, like, you know, I saw some people complaining about the Ray Allen, com Ray Allen comparisons, but well, there's, some, there's a bit of Ray Allen in him. Oh, yeah, there's a bit for sure. Personality? A top dog in the NBA. And that's why fit is really important. And I think I do question a little bit who's gonna mentor him in, in Sacramento. Yeah. All right. Now all the people that pretty much all the people that we thought would be gone by now are gone by now. Trey Burke's the only guy left. Right he's on the clock. What do you think? You think they'll take him? I I hope so. Brandon Knight at point guard hasn't worked, so I mean I remember talking to my friend who um he watches. He's a big Detroit fan, and he's when he told me he just doesn't get the offense. He's not a great offensive player. Hmm. Surprising, no trades yet though. Yeah, because it sounded like there was going to be a lot of them. Yeah. I know that Coach Salt for Kansas meant a lot to you. What's what's the major for? <laughs> I just got a tweet that said, "There are no words, man. I'm sorry. Keep the faith." <laughs> it's like someone I know just died. <laughs> All right, congratulations, man. Enjoy the night. Back to you, Bruce. I like uh, Tucker Warner's tweet. The tweet about Zeller. <laughs> what did he say? Uh, in all caps, Zeller is athletic in sprint, scare quotes. Zeller is athletic in the sense that he has to sprint and jump as high as possible in every play. <laughs> you want to talk about how much I like that Michigan team? I was really hoping they would win the championship. I like, switch allegiances every year. Like. I'm happy for like Louisville with that with that guy going down with that injury, but man, that Michigan team was so much fun. Joshua, I have you on here with all our American viewers. Oh no! Uh, uh, explain to some people who don't know what poutine is. Poutine. Uh... Easiest way to describe it is French fries in a bowl with some cheese curds covered in hot gravy. Um, you can I, do I, a lot of other stuff to it. I mean, you can add bacon, you can add uh, mushrooms, vegetables, pulled pork. You can do all sorts of stuff to it. But the general thing is fries, gravy, and cheese curd, and it's excellent. We should probably elaborate that it's thicker fries. They're not like shoestring. Oh yeah, 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 that's true. They're not like shoestring fries. They're yeah, they're definitely a little bit thicker. Yeah, it's it's something I missed down here. Um, during this during this break, we'll go off topic a little bit as we already have. Um, have you given a listen to uh, Run the Jewels, the LP and Killer Mike album? No, not yet. No. No, well, not yet. You should. Hold on, where's my phone? I'm gonna write this down. I'll check it out after the draft. It's a free download. Everyone out there, you look it up. Free to download. Uh, I really enjoy it. If you like hip hop, you like rap, LP and Killer Mike are two 
I'd say the two of the best out there right now. Uh, good to listen to. <laughs> um, I'm gonna actually gonna go see them. I'm gonna go up to Portland and Van and Seattle and Vancouver at the end of July. And I'm gonna see LP and Killer Mike on their tour when they come to Portland. Nice. You're just traveling the continent, man. Yeah. I gotta see them. I should see them. See the rest of the country sometime. Well, according to multiple league sources, this pick is on the move, and according to other sources, it is going to the Sixers. We're still working on the details of this trade, but really, they Sixersing. The Sixers, which certainly makes sense, uh, based on the fact that uh, New Orleans already had Anthony Davis. We knew that if Noel slid this further down, he could be in play for other teams. And I talked to a couple of GMs within the top five. No, Noel and Davis seem like uh, such a great five, thing. Right Wait, what are they saying? I think he's saying that Noel was picked for the 76ers. Oh. Which, no. means, which means no Bynum. No, this is going bang. This is not. This is not what I wanted to happen. That sucks. How do we miss the news that Maurice Cheeks is their head coach? Wait, what? Really? Detroit's head coach, Maurice Cheeks, Mo Cheeks. Mo Mo. Trey Burke is still out there, college player of the year. Will he be able to stay close to his college home as Otto Porter did earlier tonight with Washington? Here's the commissioner. Oh, boy. Lay it on me, David. Oh, he's not coming out yet. <laughs> Just kidding. With the eighth pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Pentavious Cornwall Pope. Whoa. Yeah, wow. CT. I didn't think that. No. Well, this is, his, this is his range. He was projected to go somewhere between, like, 7 and 14. Yeah, but I thought... Yeah, yeah. I did think their well, their their needs are clearly in the in the backcourt. Yeah. Um, I thought first, clearly they needed a point guard. Yes. That was a clear need, especially with Trey Burke available. Yep. This kind of surprises me, uh, but I mean they still do need that wing scorer. They do need someone who can stretch the floor with some range. But yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. I've added a poll to the um to our story of the the podcast drafting Cody Zeller. Right. So if someone wants to vote on whether they like it or don't like it. It's a yay or nay kind of thing. Oh, that's going to be great. <laughs> Joshua, you sound sarcastic. What is sarcasm? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go see these results for right now. Oh, I just added it right now. There's good yeah, I'm sure there's at least 30. We should at least see the comments. Oh, so there's a, there's a WTF. I have to admit, I did not see this coming. This is why we're bottom feeders. <laughs> that sucks. Zeller will hustle, but he's not a starter. This is pure BS. The only way Zeller can make this right is by adding 30 more pounds. Hey, here's a positive one. Great pick. We needed some scoring and Bennett was gone. Yep. Okay. If he doesn't turn out good in the next two years, we need to fire Cho. Cho is a major douchebag. 
in a way I can. But you were a clutch player at Georgia. Okay. You think that'll translate into the NBA? I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I don't think he starts over McBob. Yeah, I see that one. I'm mad and disgusted at the same time. <laughs> I think we reached on Zeller, but I'm fine with the pick. Polished big man that can score from the inside and out and ultimately trump concerns about his athleticism and standing reach in the draft. This is an interesting uh, tweet, or tweet, message on the comments. Um, one of our readers, um, sorry, I'm just reading it again. He suspects that Cho, Cho Zeller, because he's a good player, you know what you're getting. Um, <clears throat> but he's not the best player available, and that'll keep them with a low draft pick next year. It's possible. We, we just really like what he's about. We like his work ethic. The weird thing about knowing, knowing what you're going to get in the draft is that even if the player's like a finished prospect, like Zeller is, mm. like, do you really know what you're going to get at the next level? Yeah, you can never really be sure. I agree. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Would you like to still see refined? Like... <laughs> Everything, you know, so uh, that's what we want to be about around here. Going, going back, I mean, get better. So, did we kind of think Thomas Robinson is more or less of a finished player? No, I, uh, yeah. I mean, close. Yeah, that's a great question. Holding it close to the chest, and I can't remember. But. All right, just seeing about a minute ten left. In Minnesota, I don't think is going to touch her. <laughs> I like it, he's handsome. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna recommend that. <laughs> I'll do that. Good comment, son of a Newton. I like it. I'm liking. Who's picking number ten? Number ten will be Port Portland. Portland. They really New want Orleans. everything point guard, and then New Orleans. I'm assuming is trading it to number one. <laughs> oh my god. That's a funny comment. But the problem is the lottery hates us. But really, like after this, when the players everyone thought would be the top picks are playing into your hands, like. Like these are the presumed top picks. Like, can you really like blame the lottery at this point? <laughs> oh, check out our votes. They're going. Right now we have six for Nay and three for Ye. Oh, I got four for Ye. Ooh. Oh. Broussard is reporting Noel to Philly for Drew Holiday and a 2014 first round pick, top three protected. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Wow. After all that, after all that nice things about Vasquez and their train for a point guard, which is good, you know. I can't Drew Holiday's I a love good point guard. In the <laughs> Davis Stern's such a great troll. Ooh. Whoa. Another point guard. More point cards. All the point cards. I think it remains to be seen just how long Trey is going to wear that Minnesota Timberwolves hat. I'm very happy with Trey Burke and his family. I know based on a lot of our not the case. Yeah, he's probably going to get dealt. Between two and eight. But a lot of times, almost all of the Shiny tie. It's where you get picked. Seriously. Seriously. To come in and play your game. I think Philadelphia with the trade of Drew Holiday, he's going to get that opportunity to have a basketball on the team. You think he's going to win? But Philadelphia wants to talk about trading. Almost there. Well, I think with Minnesota, though, you know, they have a contender potentially in about a year. This is just a piece that can. Yeah, I like Trey Burke. I've been surprised by this draft. I don't think any team's quite Austin Rivers it, but I'm definitely surprised. So am I. Nice. Yeah, he's... I like nice bounce pass. Yeah. 
He's a friend. He can handle it. I think he's done a good job as a leader, knocking his big shot down against Kansas. I'm not worried about his size because he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He's a teammate of Jared Soldier in high school, come out of Columbus, Ohio. He was overlooked in his own state. You know, Ohio State took Aaron Kraft instead of him. And he was slated to go to Cincinnati. Before he's he up, Portland. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Who's on the board? Portland. Let me like pull oh. it up. Still available. Um, let me think. Carter Williams is probably up there. Yeah. Um, hey, Olenek. I saw, him, I saw him on your board. What do you think of that Stephen Adams guy? Is that? I think that's his name. I I just I don't know. I didn't see him play really. Neither, I didn't see him play as very much as either. But from what I've read, it seems like no, <laughs> basically. You said uh, this is just the start. You're not satisfied. What's next for Trevor? You just ready to come right in and work hard from day one. I'm just ready to make an impact. Um, like I said, I'm excited right now, so. I just want to thank everyone. Congratulations. Enjoy the night. It's back to you, Reese. Mm -hmm. standing there side by side with Shane Vanier and Trey Burke. Heather Cox down the same room with Trey's mom. Wow. You'll see. Lots of pride right now, Rhonda. You are hearing rumors that perhaps from Minnesota to you. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're here waiting patiently. We're just blessed that his, his name is up there. Regardless where it is, he's going to go in and give his all. And this has been a dream that he's had for a long time. You shared with me that when he was a little boy, he drew a picture of himself with an NBA jersey on. Oh. Right? Um, at that point, I can't recall the actual grade he was in, but he was in um, middle school. So he was young, and he was focused, and he knew what he wanted to do. That was his career path. You know, oftentimes you ask little boys what they want to do, and it's either NFL or NBA, and you go have something else to fall back on. But, you know, if that's your dream. And Whoa. You work, What's up? That's what happened. Uh, watch bomb. Oh, no. You want me to say or you want to wait? I'm going to wait. Don't tell me. Growing up. Oh no, why did you say it like that? Well, wait, he's got a correction, he's saying. I don't know if you give up 14 and 21 to move up to get Trey Burke, but I'm sure there's some sort of combination. I'm floored by the New Orleans Noel trade. Drew Holiday, they just signed him to an extension. And on top of that, they give up a 2014 first round pick, supposedly on Twitter, so it must be true. They're saying you have luck for Cranchup. I still don't know. What do you think? I just got a new GM saying, hey, Noel for a first and. And Drew? Yeah. I feel like the Sixers gave too much, to be honest. I do too. Drew, uh, Drew Holiday is certainly not a superstar, but he's that tier right below that. He's yeah. probably a top 20 point guard in the league, if not better. Oh, I think you'll like the launch bomb. Okay, it's probably coming up soon. Yeah, he, he just had to make a correction. Oh, they're just about to talk about it. What the heck? Hey, sports guy. Oops. Yeah, for whatever reason, I got booted out for a minute. You're still not on video, but I do hear you now. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, have they said anything yet? No. A point one draft in McCollum. Which is strange, but okay. Yeah. 
together and sniff against certain lineups. I, I, I'm not convinced that they're trading him. You know, the term safe has been used a lot. It was thrown around with Otto Porter, Ola Depot, in a lot of cases, and even Trey Burke. But I think this is actually a safe pick if he plays before and goes to another team because he has a distinct skill shooting the basketball. I yep. think going to be a heat check for your lighting up the scoreboard on many nights. Oh, you think he's an irrational confidence guy? Yeah. I like him so much. He's going to be such a I don't know how he's going to be in the NBA, but he's fun to watch. Yeah, he's a real student of the game. He's going to learn a lot. Nice. I'll be back in a second. Yep. So this Philly pick, I believe, is going to New Orleans. So who would New Orleans take? I imagine a point guard. What's that? <laughs> I said I believe this Philly pick is going to New Orleans. So I'm trying to figure out who I think New Orleans would pick. I'm thinking a point guard. Oh wait, no, 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 no. They just got a point guard. That's so weird. Drew Holiday. I'm going to Portland, at least for the time being, he is with Shane Daniel. Thanks, Grace, for CJ. I'm your friends with Damian Miller. Uh, what's the meaning to go play with, with a great player and a fellow mid-major? It means a lot. The opportunity, you know, Dane's a good guy. He's kind of laid the path for, for not only myself, but a lot of mid-major players out there. And uh, I feel like we'll be a, definitely be a dynamic back and forth, whether we play together or whatever the team decides to do. I read somewhere you were 5'2", 108 pounds for the high school freshman. Wow. <laughs> so, what's this mean to you? It means a lot to me, man. I've come along. I was taller. 5'2", 108? I was taller than that in high school. I was taller than that in, like, fourth grade. Well, even before that. Oh, you're, like, 6-something. Still. What are you, like, 6'7", six, 6'6"? Six, six? Six, six. When I started high school, I was 6'3", I believe. Well, in Philly, that's interesting. He wants another one. Who's their point guard there? He's a better shooter Whoa. than Damian Lillard, who scored all the points this year. Jump shots in isolation and pick and roll. Let's drill. They must have some kind of plan. It's critically important. In the like, are they, is Philly doing a legit rebuild? Because that's what it seems like with the Noel. They might. Freeze, he makes. I don't know what. Because they shipped out Iggy, and now they just shipped out Drew. And he's gonna have less assists. Then you go Bionin? break it all down. How or Drew Holiday. What will his decisions hmm? be? He's gonna make Andrew Bynum or Drew Holiday. Well, <laughs> well, I mean they they lost Iguodala last year. Yeah. Now they just traded uh, Drew Holiday. Yes. Yeah. Or center that presumably is the future of the franchise, which to me means no more Andrew Bynum. Oh, for sure they're not going to bring Andrew Bynum back. So I have no idea what Philly's going to do. All right, Tom, we'll see if they stay. Now, we have Philadelphia on the clock for a few seconds. Let's clean up the proposed trade, which is not official yet. It would send Nerlens Noel to Philadelphia. Multiple reports in ESPN sources. Noel's going to Philadelphia. Drew Holiday going to New Orleans. And the Sixers 
get a 2014 first round pick, meaning at least right now, that's the way it stands up. Uh, uh, the Hornets get the pick, right? It says here the, I, it says get the 14 pick. Oh, wow. Wow. Wait, who gets the pick? The Sixers. And so, and you look at the Hornets. Drew Holiday and Eric Gordon as your What? Anthony right? Davis, Anderson, I think they have like over $20 million in cap space. It, it's another team. What? Oh. Building everything. And if you're fitting, I think they're trying to rebuild. They got a lottery pick plus no, it's the one for Drew Holiday. They got the supposed, they got the uh, proposed number one pick and a first round pick. Now without Drew Holiday. For Drew Holiday. That's pretty impressive. So now they have two ballots in the Andrew Wiggins sweepstakes. It's only top three protected from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, there's no, there's no way the Hornets are going to be back in the lottery that deep. Uh-oh. Chris got to tell me something. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it's funny, you know. Uh, I got questions about Ooh. if you had any power within the organization or stuff like this yesterday, and I saw people like I saw like Draft Express say today that he almost got booted or something out of the organization. And then, really? Yeah. And then this is his supposed pick. This is, you know, you know, Wanda's report was that Cho really loved, or someone's report was that Cho really loved Zeller. And people just talk out their ass. <laughs> like, no one yeah. knows. <laughs> With the 11th pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Michael Carter Williams from St. Louis. Oh! Hey, card. They really are rebuilding. All right. Cool. I'm down. I like it. I like it. It's a good way to start. Noel and Carter Williams? Absolutely. Yeah. Who else do they have? It's really weird. I was thinking about this before, and I really can't think of who's on their roster. It's weird. Um, I know Arnett Moultrie is there. I do like him. Isn't there um, another guy from... Some Syracuse they have, that guy they took like number two. I haven't turned it. Yeah. Um, Kwame. Is he taller than Evan? Still got Kwame? <laughs> yeah, they do have Kwame. Yeah. I'm um, just looking up their roster right now, so I want to know. Okay, you're gone. Spencer Hawes, Thaddeus Young. Nick Young, Jason Richardson, Darrell Wright, LaVoy Allen. Charles Jenkins. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then naturally, Royal Ivy, who I feel like has been there forever. Royal T. Ivy. He was on the Thunder for a bit, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, you're right. What's your dog's name? Uh, Kiki. Kiki. What kind of dog? Pardon me? What kind? Uh, Bichon Freeze. What brand? What store brand? <laughs> uh, what was it? I think PJ's Pet Store. <laughs> Uh, so work on every single day, you know, practicing the games. And, uh, wow. Understand. Oh, the Raptors pick. Uh, God damn. Uh, you know, <laughs> I looked up to you. You know, I, you know it's, there's no one. Does the Raptors just, have a pick? 
No, this is the Raptors pick right here, Oklahoma City. Oh, oh is that the thing? That, that pick got traded all over the place. Yeah. So, um, with the Bobcats having Cody Zeller at center, Biombo at power forward, uh, Kid Gilchrist at shooting guard, and Kemba at point guard. A, do you think they'll bring back uh, Gerald Henderson? I certainly hope so. There is a hole in the roster, <laughs> and it fits in perfectly. Um, well, okay. I guess it depends on the money, I guess, but um. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I would be. In I mean, if you can get him back at a good price, I'd keep him. What kind of price are you thinking? He's probably. I'll be honest. I think he's going to get offered more, but I think he's. I'd, I'd be comfortable paying him about six and a half, seven a year. Yeah, I'd be comfortable with that. Three years, something like that. Yep, but I have a feeling it's going to get offered more than that. Eight, yeah, it's certainly could. Um, so if we think he's going to be brought back, what kind of things do you think will happen with free agency? Uh, really hard to say. Um, I feel like it's going to be more of the same. I mean, filling stop gaps until next year's draft. Because the process isn't over, just improve what you have and fill the holes until the next draft. If anything, this is completely like their whole starting five now is is young players. Their mm -hmm. veteran player is Gerald Henderson, who was drafted in two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yep, I think you're right. So I don't think we'll have many complaints about playing time. Um, ben Gordon might, <laughs> but as far as fans, I think we'll see a lot of young players. I hope you like watching young players play basketball. If nothing else, it's entertaining. Um, what you have to good. remember um, uh, about Rich Cho, though, is. He's one of those guys that believes in acquiring young talent to trade it for established talent. So he's all about he's all about acquiring assets. Yeah. Like he fully realizes that all of these guys are technically expendable if there's a deal in which he can he thinks he can improve the team. Right. And I'm from what I understand about him um, is that. I mean, he's constantly evaluating a players as they are right now and what they can be, mm -hmm. and the value they have. Whether it's worth more to trade them now because other teams might value them more to see what they can get, or hold on to them because they might have that value. Right. Um, Man, the Thunder are about to get a nice player. Who is it going to be? They were hoping this pick would be higher than 12. I mean, when they made this trade, they thought Toronto, they assessed them as one of the worst teams in the league and were hoping to be in the top five in the West. All right, the pick is in now for Oklahoma City. 12th overall, who's going to join Russell Westbrook in OKC? The commissioner. Yeah, that pick was protected really strangely. My friend commented on our uh, on this video said these guys suck. All bad at Twitter and not welcome in Vancouver anytime. <laughs> well then. Well, now you get to see some highlights, Ben. Yeah, let's see. He's got nice hair. Yep. He doesn't want to obscure with his hat very much. I'm not a fan of his brows. Yeah, <laughs> got some thick brows. <laughs> oh, the email thread's going well. The roof is on fire email thread. Oh, boy. Okay. What the hell? Why? 
<laughs> Does the Bobcats remember how bad their post defense was last year? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. One of 18 kids. Wow. The males average 6'9, the females average 6 foot. 6 foot. That's ridiculous. That means his whole family is super tall. Yeah. I think the average people in my family are about five. Five. <laughs> Once you average out the women, uh, I'm about five, seven. My brother's about five, eight, five, nine. <laughs> oh, boy. Dad's about five, six. I don't like that. <laughs> I think the average height in my family, at least my immediate family, must be like six, six one. Oh, so short. <laughs> well, there's, really hit about. there's me at six six. My brother at like six three, six four. Um, I think my mother's about five nine, and my sister's about five ten, five eleven. Shoot. Stephen Adams. As far as NBA names go, that's that's not too. Uh, no, it's pretty boring. <laughs> Steve Adams, like Steve very Adams. generic. Uh, Stephen, going to Oklahoma City. Horizontal with the tie. Okay. He has a cool accent. I like it. I wish we dropped it. <laughs> I like him. Me too. Good accent. <laughs> That's all that matters to Americans. Yeah. You're born to a white accent. Man, his sister's a beast. Gold medalist, yeah. Who's picking Dallas? Okay. Give me one sec, I'll be back. Okay. Bet the Mavericks gonna try and draft Mike James again. I think they added him twice on their roster last year. Yeah. Why not take him another time?
Dallas Mavericks and the Houston Rockets. All right. That pretty much messed him up. He lost the situation in Dallas where he would be the franchise player. And in 2014, they got the Capitals to build around him. Now, the Mavericks have to shed salary to get to White House. They have enough money to offer him a near Oh, we got a watch bomb. Who makes nine million dollars a year? They should be able to do that at some point. And they're trying to trade this pick, so they don't have. They still haven't said anything about the one from before. Do you want me to tell you that one now? Sure. Play it on. Um. To take a foreign player who they can leave overseas for a salary. Trey Burke. I think he was picked by. Um, oh, he's going to the Jazz. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I didn't hear that. Oh, I didn't hear it. Which I think is a really nice move for the Jazz. You know what the Jazz are giving up, do they say? Oh, number 14 and number 21 in this draft. That's nice. Yeah, really. If you go to Dallas, they have a great owner in Mark Cuban and a championship coach in Rick Carlisle. But there is aging, and when are they going to be able to build a roster around? And Houston can basically build the 2009 Magic only with James Harden. Okay. That the Lakers, they couldn't figure out a way to use this one plays out. Here's the game in the education, what the Mavericks plans are with their pick 13th overall. Here's the commission. With the 13th pick in the 2013 NBA draft. The Dallas Mavericks select Mike James. Lee Olinick from Kamloops, Ooh. Canada, and Gonzaga University. Kelly is not here this evening. Yeah, this is the writing on the wall. But Kelly Olinick, I'm sure will. Don't you think? KG yep. gone. Yep, they have no interest in getting Dwight Howard. There's their center. Oh, I kind of just, I kind of just broke that watch bomb to you, I guess. Oh, wait, did you? <laughs> yeah. One over my head. Uh, Wodge is reporting that Boston's trading for this pick. Hmm. I'm surprised Boston wanted him, to be honest. Yeah. Especially when you have feel, Fab Mello. Yeah, I was going to say, you have Fab Mello and Jared Sullinger. Well, I'm not big on Fab Mello that much. <laughs> Nor am I. But he's still young, you never know. Yeah. Well, they're. No, I mean, the Celtics are about to be rebuilding. If they. If this trade with Paul Pierce and KG goes down, it's. I think it's got about a week before they can actually officially make it. Um, I mean, they're going to be in full on. Rebuilding mode. They got the draft pick from the Clippers. Um, if the trade goes down, they'll have three more draft picks. They'll have the 2014, 2016, 2018 net picks. And then they'll have their own picks. Yep. I mean, honestly, I'm wondering how this will go for Rajon Rondo. I mean, well, it depends. Do they want to build around him, or do they want to get rid of him and start all over? I would, I would think they want to hold on to him. I would hope so. I like. But him. it's whether he's patient enough, because that's a long time. Well, I don't think they plan on using the 2018 pick necessarily. I mean, they might trade yeah. it in a subsequent deal. It's true. Man, we're only we're not even halfway through the first round. I bet, like, I think in the NFL draft, this would be about three picks the way through. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched that. I tried one year. It takes forever. Yeah, they do. It's really a painful thing. 
Introducing a skin saving secret from Proactive. Really proactive. To help play the appearance of discoloration, brighten skin tone. Oh, you poor guy. I'm getting a Taco Bell commercial right now. Beautiful. That's way better than this. <laughs> Right to your door. Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting burritos loaded with uh, not um with burritos and <laughs> I'm getting attractive women talking about their skin. Oh, big skin fan over here. Whoa, skin. And it's more even and it's soft. It's wonderful. Order proactive. My Sixers friends are pretty much freaking out over this. What, they don't like Noel? No, they like it. They like this. They're like, their new GM, Sam Hinkie, they're like, this guy's amazing. And rightfully so. This is a pretty masterful move, I would think. It certainly looks like it. Yeah. Dark spot repair give you the flawless, even skin tone you always wanted. Results I think it's a really mo weird move for New Orleans, to be honest. I kind of understand it, actually. Um, because when you, I always forget they have Eric Gordon, Eric Gordon, Drew Holiday, and Anthony Davis. That's nothing to be like, wow, that's crap. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I keep forgetting they have Eric Gordon because he only plays like a game a year. Yeah, I never, really, I never really bought the whole "I've been injured this whole time" thing. I feel like you know, yeah. making it worse than it really is. But I'm hoping now with Drew Holiday, he's a little more receptive to the playing there. We'll see. He's definitely come off as someone I don't like very much anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to like him a lot. But, yeah, he had a bit of a. Jazz on the clock. Uh, <laughs> kind of situation going there. Okay, so this pick is going to Minnesota. Yeah. So I'm expecting a shooting guard. He's having an 18-month I would expect a shooting guard and a backup point guard. He's the crowd. Hmm. He is the 14th to the 21st pick. One of them for each, maybe. I would say a wing player. Oh, yeah. A wing player, but I feel like they do need a backup point guard. I like it. I don't know who he is. <laughs> He's decent. He's good at scoring. Reminds me a bit of uh, Jordan Crawford. Oh, oh, Shabazz. Um, I didn't hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think I like that. I like Shabazz. Pardon me? I said I like him. Yeah, let's just hope we don't find out he's 50 tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like some of this stuff is kind of unfortunate. Like, um, he took some heat over some kind of, like, expensive backpack he has. Like, some sports writer got on some. Yeah, he, I think he showed up with, um... A Louis, a Louis Vuitton backpack at a practice or something, and they're like, how did he afford that? And it's like, I mean, yeah, that's, A, I think it's a little bit racist to just think that this that this kid possibly can fight. Well, don't get me wrong. Like, if I saw a basketball player with a Louis bag, uh, Louis bag I'd be pretty suspicious, too, regardless of color. Mm, I don't know. Louis bags go for, what, two to, like, ten grand? Oh, um, got me. I think it's a little risky to just assume that he or his family can't just afford a nice bag. Right. Just take that to mean like either A, he's been getting benefits, or B, you know, who knows. Anyway, he got a bum rap from that, which was unfair. Because it was a gift from like his his family. What do you mean? 
Well, he got a bum rap for that because it actually was a gift from his family for like his birthday or something, his 18th birthday or something like that. Yeah. I worry about the job, too. I think it's more about, you know, there's the wrong age was out there for a year, and then when he was asked about it, he asked about it, and he didn't know what kind of clothes was on. He blamed other people. Milwaukee, eh? Don't turn that away, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm a little worried to look up the um, results of this ESPN poll, but I'll do it anyway. In high school, he's always in there shooting at night, and you know, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about the, the age thing. You know, I, I tend to think that was from his father. I played against his dad in high school and college when I'm home for Del Toro High. And, you know, I mean, I'm not as worried about the age thing. It's not like his driver's license has his weapon on it. It's a big problem. <laughs> I don't worry about it. Stay up on top comfort for me. Trey Burke at number 10, then Trey Dan. Yeah, this is interesting. I just think Trey Burke at least... Hmm? I'm just looking back over this draft, and yeah, this, this is interesting. Milwaukee Bucks are on the clock right now, and we're through the lottery now, and you start looking at guys that perhaps are picked that don't have quite the hype of a lottery pick that turn out to be gems once they are selected. Certainly, Roy Hibbert, George Hill, acquitted themselves quite well with Indiana. Drew Holiday just got traded, believe, proposed trading tie losses. Kawhi Leonard was brilliant in the NBA Finals. Jimmy Butler showed himself. The thing about most of these players that they're mentioning is that they inexplicably fell. It's not like they were ranked that high and they got drafted there. They just inexplicably fell. Well, his soldier had some red flags with his injury, I think. Didn't he have some back? Yeah, 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 he did for sure, yeah. And as for Norris Cole, I thought that was that was pretty much where he was swayed. Yeah, yeah. he's an exception, I'll give you that. But, like, um... I don't know why they're singling him out anyways. He's not that good. I think he's better than people believe. He's all right. I don't think he's a starter by any means, but yeah, I think he's better than he's given credit for. Same with Chalmers. I like Chalmers. I think he's, I think he's pretty good. I'm so surprised Anthony Bennett went, went one. Wow, they expect me to read that under that header? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't. No, I can't do that. That's insane. So maybe they can find a first rounder who can help lift their spirits a bit with 15th over. All the Bucks, of course, having to rebuild their roster just a bit. We see the clock has expired, and David Stern about to announce his selection. Well, they're in a situation. Brady Jennings. Bucks, Bucks, Bucks. Think they're gonna box it? Uh, no, I think they'll make a good pick. They were just kind of building into a playoff team again, and now it's the reset button. They're building around Larry, Larry, Larry Sanders, Gary, and Eli Sullivan. That's it. Uh, I think this is the year they're. We got to make a decision on. Um, is he pay him? What is he worth? He's not. I don't think. Brandon he's Jennings. I think that. I think they can give him a qualifying offer, maybe. For me. I think for the Bucks, I think this is the year they might be able to give. I think they can give him a qualifying offer or re-sign him or. He can yeah. Free agency. He's a restricted free agent, so they can match anything. If they want to. In the 2013 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Giannis Adetokounmpo from Athens, Greece. Oh, he's really good. Is this the Greek guy? Yeah, he's yeah. really good. I hope he, I hope he does really well. That'd be cool to see. Yeah, seriously. Okay, so our um, the yay or nay poll is we've got about 150 votes now, and uh, yay is ahead 78 to 74. 
Really? Nice. Yeah. I didn't think it would be that even. <laughs> oh man, I love watching his highlights. This young man did not leave the country of Greece until three weeks ago when he played in a tournament in Italy. And he was fortunate because at that tournament, all 30 NBA teams could see him and not worry about the YouTube videos. He's got a Kevin Durant body. He handles the ball like a point forward. He's got a great feel for the game, and he's a great kid with a high motor. But this is a, this is a pick that is certainly going to be a future pick. Hey, how tall is he? Who? Um, Giannis? Yeah. Uh, I think he's 6'9", 6'10". Oh. People always look much taller next to David Stern. Yeah, David's a small guy. You probably cannot, but in the long-term picture, this kid has as much upside as Russell Westbrook. And I'm a big fan of corn nuts. <laughs> Shout out to corn nuts. <laughs> Not a, they're not going to do that. You're going to have to put him in an NBA game, aren't they? I studied him extensively on YouTube. He looked like a great Paul George. Now, he was going against an 8th grade CYO team. But uh, I was still really impressed by some of the stuff he was doing. And he's got giant hands. He grew three inches in the last like, couple months. Fran said, if he was like a high school already, like, he would have been one of the top five guys coming into college. I like the pick. Unfortunately, for Milwaukee, that's a reset button now that we're building but also, like Milwaukee. Oh, we still got Tim Hardaway's son on the board. Oh, he's still trying to get us to read that, that trade text. Yeah, I can't do it. My TV is HD and I can't read that. Yeah, I've got a pretty decent TV here now. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the reaction at the Bobcats draft party after the selection was a chant of Bobcats suck. Wow. Well, thankfully, we won't be the Bobcats for much longer. <laughs> Then they'll just look really stupid for chanting a team that doesn't exist. Oh, Seller is not a Mullins 2.0. They're completely different players. Whoa, Atlanta might have three picks in a row. I know they have two, I think. They're saying that that pick that Boston has might not go to Dallas, it might go to Atlanta. Uh, okay. What did the what did the Hawks give up? I'm not sure yet. Andy Cash is telling me stuff, and I'm reporting. They just get a pick for no reason. I like that. Yeah, let's see, we've got a comment that says, I see Zeller as our power forward. So do I, actually. Yeah. On offense or defense? Both. Well, you really think? Well, yeah. He's not really long enough to defend centers, I don't think. Yeah. I can see that. I think teams will match up their center against them. Especially what do you with mean? On the court. Well, with Biombo on the court, they'll probably match up. Um, well, it's like Zach said. He gets pushed around very, very easily. He's a light guy. He's not very strong. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you have Biombo on the floor, you're going to be at a at a loss. Uh, you can put your power forward on him if you want to put your if you want to put your center on on Zeller. You give him some trouble with the length and the bigger body. Hey, my TV just went out. Pardon me? 
My TV is having difficulties. We have satellite here. Uh, you're not missing much. Jay Bilas is just talking. Oh, that's his specialty. I like that. The Canadians are taking over. Taking over? That's always a good thing. Thank you for saying that, Bill Simmons. Made my day. I hope that Michael Jordan. <laughs> Here's a comment. I hate that Michael Jordan doesn't have a Twitter, so I can see what he thinks about this pick. I don't. I don't think he would say anything. Sixteenth in the 2013 NBA draft. Stern, why so somber? Boston Celtics select Lucas Bebe Nugara. Ah. I like his hair, therefore I like the pick. <laughs> uh, I like this comment. It says, uh, "I'd just like to point out that the donut shop in my neighborhood, growing up, was called Zellers, and every time I look at Cody Zeller, I get a food boner." <laughs> I know Zellers as um, a department store. Oh. I'm not sure if that's a Canadian thing or North American. I've never seen one here. Okay, now you. The bench group. That doesn't even go on his head. Man, he's awesome. I don't. My TV is not working. <laughs> Oh man, this guy looks great. You're missing out. <laughs> He's got a fro, I'm sure. Oh, he does. Yeah, I've never seen him. A wide smile, big eyes, cool looking beard. Searching for signal over here. He has huge feet. Feet? Yeah. Sideshow feet. Bob? Sideshow Bob? Kinda, he kind of looks like Sideshow Bob, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kind of does. Those, um, Pitchforks. What were they? Hose, something like that. He's a runner. He's a shot blocker. Now. So the Bobcats bench squad becomes Ramon Sessions, Ben Gordon, Jeff Taylor, uh, uh, Josh McRoberts, Brendan Haywood. Or I don't know where Byron Mullins fits into that. I don't mind. You can just stay out of it. <laughs> Range again. Boss has done a smart thing here. Because it's 16. It's hard to find a seven footer who runs the floor like this and just get protection to the floor. Yeah. I like to pick okay. You know, he's tall. Big man. I wish you saw what this guy looked like, man. I'm sure. The hat, even, the hat didn't even go on his head. He just kept, try, kept trying to put it on, and it wouldn't go on his head, so he kind of just left it there and hoped it balanced. I had to. Uh... I had to cover a, um, basically where I work, we have a cafe, and our cafe busser, the dish busser, mm. uh, called out, so we're trying to find someone to work that shift, and um, the one guy they asked, he had a fro, and they couldn't, you have to wear a hat for it, and they couldn't <laughs> get that on. <laughs> so I had to do it. <laughs> Crappy Sapporo commercial. What? Is that a crappy Sapporo commercial. Uh. Dragons and stuff, whatever. Okay, I feel like it's time to check Twitter. Yeah, I haven't checked in a while. I haven't checked at all. I have put one tweet down and I left. <laughs> these are these are the I'm not sure if you can hear it. Um a little bit. They do these Canada basketball promos on NBA TV Canada. This is one of them. Cool. So I'm just I'm just watching a bunch of like teenagers run around. 
playing basketball and stuff. Oh, I just I just saw the picture of this guy of Nogueira. That's awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love that so much. Who's the next? Who's the next pick? Oh, dude, my God! Did you see James Harden's uh, tweet? I haven't seen anything. He deleted it, but my God! Uh, remember how OKC grabbed uh, Stephen Adams? Yeah. Uh, James Harden tweeted Steve Adams. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. <laughs> lots and lots of O's. <laughs> Oh. Come on, ATL, what you got? Stephen Adams. L O O O O O O. With the 17th pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Dennis Schroeder from. <laughs> he last played for the New York Phantoms in Germany. He played for the New York Phantoms. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder. Yeah. Ooh, stutter stuff. From the Autobahn. <laughs> was that not a travel? <laughs> I don't know, but it was cool looking. It looks like he took like a, a thousand steps. That's cool. So he's a backup to, uh... Um... What I like about this kid is unlike Ray John Rondo, he's got a race. Jeff Teague, I guess. If they bring back Jeff Teague, I think he's a restricted free agent this year. Yeah, you're right. Eighty percent on unguarded wait, how do you go from nine point one percent to eighty percent on your jump shot? That's pretty sweet. <clears throat> this guy's putting Oladipo to shame. This doesn't, like, what was he playing, like, half a minute of the game and missing all of them? Like, I don't understand. Well, part of it is that he was playing against men, like, twice his age. Yeah, age I, I understand, like, the European League is a bunch of I mean, kids versus, like, grown-ass adults. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, this... Like, there's the stigma that, like, it's a, I mean, I'm saying it's more of a fallacy than a stigma, but that Europe is more soft. Right. It's actually really physical. Yeah, it's super physical. <laughs> um, plus, when you're young, they don't, like, they don't get a lot of playing time over there, so I feel like the scouting for that is a lot more, I don't know, it's a lot more, you have to, <laughs> you better know what you're doing. Ah, oh, Devin Harris. Remember when Devin Harris was like good? Back in New Jersey. Yep. Yeah. Twenty points a game ish. I don't know. I can't remember if it was that good, but he was between seventeen and twenty. And he's really good in transition. And you watch him in that hoop summit, and he was not only there, but I was told he was really good in the practices, which all the NBA guys go to every they watch the practices every bit as much as the game. And he was really good in practices as well. Before he got out of basketball, he set the two on the table for everyone else. He's a very good penetrator. Oops. So we're now still with the Hawks. I mean, do you think the Cavs, think the Cavs have the 19th pick? Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Think they'll take Bullock? No, I think they'll pick somebody that was projected to be chosen in the second round. Not sure who, just somebody. <laughs> the German part's exciting. <laughs> It's always, it's always interesting when you have a foreigner 
<laughs> we made some powers too. Three consecutive initial uh, international players have been selected. Which you know, back when uh, the Bobcats had Boris Diaw, when I, when I went to games, I would always see like French people who would uh, who came only to see Boris Diaw play. Wow. Pretty much. Right. That must be a pretty crappy life. <laughs> well, I don't mean they only came to town to watch it. <laughs> they only came to the game because Boris Diaw was there. Um, just looked up Devin Harris randomly. He had one year at 21.3 points per game. Wow. And it's sandwiched between 16.9 and 15.4. Wow. Pretty sure he was a 20 point scorer at one point. Yeah, I didn't think it was that much. Solid. I just remember watching a. Uh, well, it eventually became a, uh, a GIF. It was, it was like a baseline camera. Mm. You took a shot, you took a jump shot from, I think, it was about a three pointer. And it was straight ahead, so it had like. It had like the hoop, you know, in the foreground, and it had him in the background. Right. And the ball just goes, Ooh, and it sails out of bounds. Towards the <laughs> Whoa. I gotta find some of these. First uh, back. I'm a little scared of touching it. What? Somebody texted me a link that I have never seen in my life. Uh, DB.tt? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Oh. Okay, it's just an image, whatever. Two dots don't make you say Schroeder. Schroeder? Schroeder. Where do I go to see where how people are voting with all this sports nation? No idea. Ah, here we go. Are they debating how to say his last name? Hmm? Are they debating how to say his last name? Well, I'm looking at some of these polls on Sports Nation. Yeah. About 9% who think in five years Anthony Bennett will be a star. 30% who think he'll be very good. 38% that he'll be a contributing player. 9% say he'll be a fringe player. 14% say he'll be a former player. Oh, man. Shane Larkin. Awesome. Uh, let's see what people were saying about Cody Zeller. Okay, Summer League got to start tomorrow. Can't wait. Cody Zeller, 7%. Star player, 23%. Very good player, 38%. Fringe, or 38% contributing player, 21%. Fringe player, 11%. Former NBA player. This is in five years. How good people think he will be. I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah. On the bright side, Ye is still winning on ours. Cool. 101 to 91. Yeah, I'll put our polls over there. I think we have. Well, I think our people are more knowledgeable about the Bobcats than general populations. I hope so. I think I can say that as a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so. So Atlanta just drafted two point guards. How do you feel about that? Wait, they drafted another point guard? Oh, they did. One of them's got to be heading out of there, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, that one's proposed trade to Dallas. <laughs> say Warkins proposed to Dallas. 
Pick your lane. You're not going to stay. You're probably going to stay. Pick your lane. Cleveland is on the clock. They were told. And they told Randy the Cap that they're going to keep the number one overall pick, Anthony Bennett. However, it appears that Atlanta might not be able to say the same thing about their most recent pick. So, Anthony Bennett went first. Did um, Larry Johnson go first? Pardon me? Did Larry Johnson go first? I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I don't... So the Hornets had back-to-back -back years where they had Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson. Right. And I think Larry Johnson came the year after. I think Alonzo was second behind Shaq. I think Larry was the first pick. I'm looking it up. One sec. I think this goes further into the uh, comparison. <laughs> you know, they take him first. It's kind of like Corey Joseph. Yeah. yeah, he was first. The Larry Johnson uh, comparisons continue. <laughs> Ooh, he went with a polka dot tie, bow tie. So, um, I do want to have <laughs> That's not very nice, Shane's father. What did he say? I don't know if he had the potential to make the NBA. <laughs> And everybody I talked to said even like as a five year old as a youngster, he'd be out actually playing baseball with you. And you had scouts coming up to you and saying, Hey, I wonder if Cleveland is going to try to turn Ben into a small forward. That he switched to basketball. Well, you know, he went through a pretty traumatic experience. You know, he really enjoyed baseball until he got to a situation. I think if he where lost a good 60 pounds, he could play to. small forward pretty well. Who? What? Anthony Bennett. If he lost 60 pounds, he could do what? I think he could play small forward. Yeah, if he lost 60 pounds, that's a big if for him. Things have a funny way of working out. Congratulations on your proud. Yeah, he's about six, seven, super long arms. <laughs> How much weight did he gain? People were saying. Uh, I think twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Noel lost weight when he uh. When he got to get a surgery. Yeah. The and doctor told him he didn't want to do the operation unless he lost weight. What's that? The doctor told Noel he didn't want to uh, do the operation unless Noel lost weight. Ah, uh, okay. So speaking, when you, uh, um, I don't know, when you're really athletic, you know, you work out that much. When your muscle turns into fat, you will lose weight because fat is, <laughs> fat is less mass. Hold on, I'm about to relocate. <laughs> Just gathering stuff I want to bring with me. Yeah, it should be good. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Whoa. Back into the bedroom. Let's see if we can find the draft here. 
So what? So what? So what? So Portland's going to keep uh, McCollum, CJ McCollum, I guess, right? Um, no idea. Um, yeah, I don't see anything that they're going to trade him. So they're going to keep him for sure up their uh, bench production. You know they need a they need a center now, a defensive minded center. They can Greg Oden sign him a free agency. Uh, it's a joke, Josh. It's a joke, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make the draft work on my computer. Sergey's got hair that like uh like he played at Alabama or something. Sergey Oh now I'm behind you. Like yeah. you. Are you happy that you're ahead of me now? <laughs> it evens out. Travis said because they can convince him to stay in Russia for one more year, then they can pay more to go out. A minute ago, he's going back to Russia in a little while. He's got a flight that leaves at 11:30. He wanted to come here and be part of this experience, and Cleveland selects him. With a <laughs> so he came to America just for the draft. Okay. Sergey Karasev and friend, what kind of player is he? Well, the reason he's going back is he's got a game with the Russian national team tomorrow in <laughs> Belgrade, Serbia. Oh, I think my friend has video of um and one of the most of the Bobcats draft party. Oh no. With the Russian national team. Oh, no. Do I want to see it? I don't know. I'm going to watch it though. Oh, it says unable to process. Blessing in disguise. I just don't want to watch it. You really want to see people chant Bobcat suck. Bobcat suck. Come on. I was there when they drafted. Kemba, and that was a big, great reaction. Everyone loved that. Well, I bet Kemba was the hottest thing. <laughs> I can never not support a guy named Sergey. Oh, you gotta love a guy named Sergey. Thanks, Reese. This is Sergey. Congratulations. <laughs> Your father was a great I love this guy. What did he mention for her? His manners. Uh, I think now he was, he was this, he was rats. Like, a lot of emotions you have. So, same like me. Stay in shape, stay, stay in their hands. So, that, that's crazy. I can feel it now that I mean now. So, but I think a couple months is, I gotta feel it. A couple so, months, that's all right. right. What has your countryman, Andre Kralenko, told you about the NBA? Uh, he'd say, like, if you're going to have a chance, you must go straight. So, like, don't do nothing. Just go. It's like, he go, and now he's, like, really big. <laughs> Europe, so, I want to be like him. Maybe be bigger. Well, thank you very much, Sergey. Congratulations. Risk. All right, Shane, I like you, Sergey. You're a good guy. Brought to you by State Farm and Cavaliers with their first round pick. Okay, they got they got four in guard. They got set number 19. Jalen, how would you how would you grade what the Cavaliers have done with their two first round picks? I think they've done a very good job, and here's why. I know a lot of people are going to question whether Anthony Bennett should be the first pick in the draft, but they did need a wing player if they weren't going to go for a big. And his potential upside offensively is terrific to play either forward spot. At the 19th, uh, you go for a guy. Uh, I trust Joe. He's bald and a lawyer. He's a player. Has a good basketball IQ. But at the same time, he's an average athlete. But you have Kyrie Irving, who's going to be a multiple-time all-star this week. Sergey Carthal, the most recent player. He makes the balls around the coast. A couple of minutes left before this pick. There's the guy who went number one, Anthony Bennett from Vegas. Find a car? Then you have to visit autotrader.ca. We have more cars for sale than any other website, so you'll always find the best prices and deals. It's even free to list your own car. 
Get started now at autotrader.ca. How many people believe that we can win this series? I am the last barrier. With indomitable heart and aggressive mental power, which breaks the myth. Have you seen this new uh, Kevin Durant commercial? No. Oh, it's so good. When the world needs one I think I'm watching American commercials now. That really packs a punch. <laughs> a hero that's manly. A hero that. I'm watching a guy who vaguely that's looks like. Wow. Well, Okay. The KFC's hot and spicy Zinger Double Down, the musty hit of the summer. Man, okay. boring, boring sandwiches, zero. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's American. So, oh, no, no, it's not. Yeah, I think I heard a dot .ca. Yeah, yeah, so do I. Oh, this is unacceptable. I can watch this on my television. I want American commercials. It's the perfect place for families to come, get away. Oh, this is definitely America. Yeah. I could not see the love in my girls' faces. We love our family time, but not every single moment is spent together. The only hard part about coming to Walt Disney World is when you have to say goodbye. Good? Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Minnie. We're Center here. You say you can't wait to watch tonight's draft pick play for their new teams. Well, you don't have to wait that long. First time ever doing the NBA Summer League. You can see it all with the Summer League. Oh, well, they're starting to market the Summer League now, huh? Live anywhere. They're smart. Your tablet. Download the Summer made, League Live now on iTunes yeah. and Google Play. You got that yet? Google Play? No. The, all right. I'm about to watch this video. Let's see how it goes. I helped them create it. There you go. The Bulls are on the clock. Time has expired on him. Derrick Rose will be coming back next season after missing the entire season. <laughs> 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 They take you care of. They lost eight of their last nine playoff games against the Heat. You've got to find a way to beat the man if you're going to beat the man. What's happening? The Bulls looking for a little bit of help. They select 20th here in the first round. Make sure David Stern with his other six remaining here in the first round. About to step to the podium and let us know who will join Tom Thibodeau. Todd. With the 20th pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls wow. Tony Sell from the University of New Mexico. Tony is not here. But the 14th pick in the 2013 NBA draft, selected by the Utah Jazz, Shabazz Muhammad is here. Wow. So why don't you give Shabazz you a quick little welcome? Whoa, we're bringing up Shabazz after his pick. What's that? Uh, so Shabazz came out before. after his pick. Muhammad being able to get to the podium and <laughs> he was picked like, what, seven there. picks ago? Terrific. Yeah. Morning. Welcome to the fraternity. I'm Welcome confused. I missed it. Muhammad selected 14th, selected by the Jazz. Snell, meanwhile, selected by Chicago. I don't know much about this guy. Culture? He does. He's a shooter. Tony Snell comes off the screen, and he knocks shots down. And he's got he's 6'7", but he's got a wingspan of 6'11". Nice. Uh, I think he can be a very good defender. He's had some problems keeping his hands down, not using that wingspan as well as he can on the defensive end, but the potential for him to use it better is certainly there. But where he really is is as a shooter, and he does a good job off pull-up jump shots. He's got a really good release. He shoots over 40% on all of his jumpers, but he shoots 47% on pull-up jumpers. That's the best in the country. He's a small and score that got Jimmy Butler all right. Jumpers well. Tony Snell can. Uh, right? Snell not yep. here to celebrate this moment tonight. I'm excited that Cornrows are coming back. With the 20th overall pick in the draft. 14th pick with Shabazz Muhammad going to Utah. And the one-year player at UCLA had a terrific season in the Pac-12 is with Shane Battier. 
Shabazz, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Better late than never. You're going to Minnesota, playing with one of the great young point guards, Ricky Rubio. What are your thoughts on Ricky? Oh, great situation for me. Uh, Ricky Rubio, I've been watching him for a while. He's a very unselfish player, and a guy like myself who likes to put the ball in the basket is going to be a great opportunity for me. What are the Timberwolves getting out of you? Timberwolves are getting a hard worker, a guy who's going to always be in the gym. I uh, want to work hard, I want to be the best. Uh, I mean, I, I want to get drafted, but I want to I make my team. I don't know, Shabazz. The playoff team, and, uh, and like I said, Ricky Rubio, Kevin Love, a whole bunch of pieces in there. I mean, I, I think we could be a really terrific team. Well, it's our tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Reese. All right, Shane, and Shabazz at the moment still wearing that Utah Jazz hat because all trades that you hear about, at least at this moment, is still kind of supposed to be approved by the NBA. Minnesota has selected Trey Burke earlier. He's expected to be on the way to Utah. Shabazz Muhammad will be going the other way. That's why they were talking about Minnesota while Shabazz was still donning that Utah Jazz hat, at least for the time being. As Tony Snell just picked up as the last draft pick by the Chicago Bulls, selected 20th overall. Bulls, of course, expecting to get Derrick Rose back fully healthy. Chris Bouchard with us right now. Chris, what's going on uh, with the Bulls? What are they thinking? Well, there were conflicting reports this week about Lou Al Dang. One report said he was being shot, and another report said that the Bulls were in contract extension talks with Dang. Both... Come on, Bizarre, don't leave me hanging. Come back. <laughs> yeah, he froze. Yeah, I'm probably, what do you think? Do you think the Bacchus are going to try and trade into the second round or anything? Uh, I don't think so. And yeah, they didn't really work out many people. Be a little asshole. Tim Hardaway Jr., Nate Walters, the classic heady backup. He's one of my favorite second round guys. The guy who's going to have like a nine year career, and we're all going to be like, wow, Nate Walters is still in the loop. So they, they, we're in the range now, the role players. Alan Kraft for Powell's another guy. Yeah, really shoot I like him too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You think we're about ready to end this? Okay. Good check, good check. All right. I think it was a good idea. I'm glad we did it. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for everyone who joined in with us. Happy to, happy to do this. That was a lot of fun. Agreed. Right now, a lot of trades. Right. Yeah, right. Not yet finalized. The jazz.